What is going on everybody, Daniel here back again with a brand new video. So if you're a Nintendo fan and you're disappointed that the Nintendo Switch is using the Tegra X1, well please don't be because the Nintendo Switch is using the Tegra X2 instead of the X1. Now where does this information come from? Does it come out of my freaking ass and am I just bullshitting you guys and should you just go to my comment section to let me know that the X-rays actually speak the truth? Well if you think about it, the Tegra X2 that was announced by NVIDIA about two weeks ago when the Nintendo Switch was released officially, the Tegra X2 pretty much supported everything exactly as the X1. If you look at the NVIDIA website, the support in terms of the Jets and TX2 and Jets and TX1 is exactly the same except for the software. The TX1 or the TX2 supports up to eight gigabytes of 128-bit LPDDR4, 53, 58 gigabits or something like that. And the Nintendo Switch has only four gigabytes, which is 64-bit or whatever when people you know took it apart and stuff. But the RAM actually doesn't tell what the processor is because Technically, you could solder as much RAM as you want if you'd like, and that has nothing to do with how the CPU looks. Now, people have x-rayed the Nintendo Switch saying that it's actually the X1, but if you guys think about it, that's like judging people for their looks. Are you really gonna judge me because of how I look? Just because I look different or just because I look alike makes me a different person? It doesn't make me a different person, and we're all alike, we're people, you know? So, if we look at the features, exactly the same other than the RAM and things that are outside the die itself it's actually the same the Jetson TX2 supports 256 CUDA cores we see that with the Tegra X1 256 CUDA cores it supports the same A53 and A57 cores which uh, the four cores A53s and the four cores A57 which pretty much makes it the same and I'm pretty sure the die is gonna have the same layout and I bet you anything if you down the road like one month down the road two months down the road if somebody x-rays the Tegra X2 you'll notice that it's gonna be exactly the same except for a few things that have changed now what exactly are the few things that changed for the Nintendo switch and why is it a Tegra X2 now if you x-rayed it and you think that it's an X1 well I'm gonna break it to you guys that the X1 and the X2 are exactly the same chip and they're gonna have everything the same in there the only difference is gonna be the transistors inside the Nintendo Switch's transistors are 16 nanometers and the Maxwell Architecture's transistors are going to be 20 nanometers. Now, if that's the case, why couldn't they have the Tegra X2 inside the NVIDIA Shield 2 instead of the Nintendo Switch? Well, the reason why is because the Nintendo Switch's uh, basically concept is that it's portable you take it on the go and so you want that power level of efficiency at 7.5 watts and the nvidia shield does not need that because it doesn't boost performance it only just makes it more power efficient for on the go so it'd be more useful for the nintendo switch and drones in fact they'll spend less money manufacturing the new nvidia shield 2 than you know adding the tegra x2 in it which is why i'm going to get to the point right now so where do I get this information that the Nintendo Switch is using the Tegra X2 when it clearly looks like the Tegra X1? If you look at the AC adapter, and this is official from Nintendo that you guys are looking right now at, uh, it says that it outputs 1.5 amps up to 5 volts of power. Now, if you times the volts in amps, you'll notice that it equals in watts. So 1.5 amps times 5 volts equals about 7.5 watts. Now, what exactly is the difference between the Tegra X2 and X1 other than the looks because they actually are the same? In fact, the developer kit module, if you guys look right here, looks exactly the same. The Tegra Jetson TX1 and the Jetson TX2 looks exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference. The power and everything like that. The main difference that you're going to notice between the X1 and X2 is going to be the power consumption. The Tegra X2 power consume basically 7.5 watts of power versus the Tegra X1 consuming 15 watts of power. And that's going to be the major difference between the two, except for, you know, the RAM support. But they made it custom, so it supports the 4 gigabytes of RAM instead of 8 gigabytes. So that is going to be my take for the Nintendo Switch. And the second one where it says it consumes 39 watts, which is 15 volts times 2.6 amps, well, that's going to be for the dock when you're in dock mode, it uh, overclocks itself, so it does need the 39 watts of power. But when you're on the go, the AC adapter is outputting no more than actually basically 7.5 amps and when i tested it with the multimeter it was exactly 7.5 so the nintendo switch when you're on the go is using 7.5 watts of power consumption which leaves it with the pascal efficiency because there's no way the x1 because the minimum for the x1 is going to be 15 watts but the nintendo switch is using 7.5 why is that because it's using maxwell not maxwell but pascal 
and that is why it's the Tegra X2. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful, hit that like button. If you did not like this video, smack that dislike. Comment down below any kind of hate. Let me know if I need to improve. And go ahead and subscribe and click that notification to keep up to date. And go to my Twitter, check it out. I'm pretty much, I don't do anything with my Twitter. Don't, don't bother. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.